Hello everyone and welcome to Coding Card. So in previous session, we have learned about the DFS traversal using both the method iterative as well as recursive method. So I have explained you each and everything in details. So in this session, we are going to learn about the BFS and we will be learning with both the method iterative as well as recursive method. So let me first explain you how this BFS works, which is breadth for search. So in DFS, we have seen that if we are given a node like this, suppose I'm creating one graph. These are the nodes. So in DFS traversal, we have seen that if we are standing here at this node, we are standing at this node and we have selected to go in this direction. So in DFS, whenever we are selecting any path, then we have to cover all the nodes coming in that direction and then we have to go in another direction for example the next direction was this then we have to cover this direction so in dfs if we are selecting any path then we have to cover all the nodes of that path but in bfs the scenario is different so let me explain you suppose this is my one given graph now i am standing here suppose this is my start point so what happens actually in BFS is that suppose I am standing here. Now you can see here lots of nodes are connected here with this start point. So in BFS, each and every nodes are traversed first one by one. Suppose this is, this is my very first node. This is the second node. This is the third one and this is the fourth one. Then one by one, every node will be traversed one by one in BFS. It means if you see, it looks like it is expanding in each and every direction one by one. So the very first traversal is done like this. Very first round of traversal is done like this. So in the second round, again, this was the very first direction. So again, this will be my very first direction. This will be my second direction. This will be my third direction. And this will be my fourth direction. Again, in this fashion, the traversal will be done. So it expands in this manner for each and every node. So let me explain you with one example. Suppose this is one simple graph and here we have to do BFS traversal and our start point is our start point is node 10. This is my start node. So in BFS, each and every connected nodes are traversed first. So suppose this is my very first node to be traversed. Second one is suppose this one 40. Third one is suppose 30. One by one, each and every nodes are being traversed first. And suppose this is the fourth one. So in very first round, we have this one as our output, which is 10 is traversed first on which we are standing. And then 20, then 40, then 30, then 50. This is the result of our very first round execution. Now we started from here 20 with our first direction, 40 with the second, third one was 30 and fourth one was 50. Now in second iteration, again, this will be my first 500 will be my first second will be 200. So let me write 500 and then 200 and third was this one, which was 100. So 100 and fourth one will be the 60. And this one will be the 460. So this will be my second round of traversal. Now next round, next round will be again 20, 500 and then 1000. So the direction which we have started our iteration, we have to follow that one only. So 1000 will be my first in the third iteration. Now there are no any node connected to 200. So we are over. So 1000 will be printed first for 200 nothing here 400 this was our third iteration nothing is present here 70 is present this is our fourth one so 70 will be printed so this will be our next iteration so you can see here this is our result so this will be our final result if you see here this will be our final result of the bfs traversal so let me write the code and i will explain you how the things are working so in DFS, we have used stack data structure, but here we are going to use, but here in BFS, we are going to use Q 
queue data section because if you see here suppose we are standing at node 10 and in the queue we are going to add its suppose we are standing at 10 node 10 and its connected nodes are 20 we started with 20 then 40 then 30 then 50 suppose if i keep this connected nodes in my queue queue then if you see here every time we have to pop the elements from the queue from the front so you can see here these are the connected nodes for the node 10 from which we are starting now you can see here if i remove this 20 from the queue if i remove this 20 so it will look like 10 was already covered 20 if 20 is removed from the queue then i have to add its connected node at the end in the queue so for 20 you can see here 500 is present so i will add simply 500 now 20 is removed now i will remove 40 so 40 will be removed so if 40 is removed then its connected node which is 200 you can see here so 200 will be added in my queue now 30 is removed so for 30 100 will be added its connected node will be added in the queue now 50 is removed so for 50 here 30 was removed then 50 is removed so for 50 its connected node is 60 so 60 is added now you can see here this was the result of our very first execution if you see here just see here see this was the very first execution result and again this is the very first result so both are matching now next is the 500 now you can see here i will remove this 500 so 500 will be removed and its associated node which is 1000 will be added in the queue now 500 is over now next is 200 so 200 is removed now no any node connected to 200 so we are over next one is 100 so 100 is removed no any node connected to 100 so we are over so it is over now next one is 60 so 60 will be removed and its connected node which is 70 so 70 will be added in the queue here now you can see here if you see the result so 500 200 160 500 200 160 this was our second iteration so both are matching now 1000 is left and 70 is left in the queue so 1000 will be removed so 1000 is removed no any connected nodes with 1000 so it is over next one is 70 will be removed now no any connected node here so 70 is removed so if you see the result both are matching so you can see how the queue data structure is working with the BFS. So let me write the code and I explain you again one more time. So you can see here we have already written the code for the DFS iterative method. So let us copy and paste here for the BFS because the code is quite similar only the data structure is changed. Here we will write BFS. Here we will write BFS and from here we will call BFS and let us write the graph we will take the same graph this one so let me first construct the graph so 10 was connected with 20 30 40 and 50 20 was connected with 500 30 was connected with 100 40 was connected with 200 50 was connected with 60 60 was connected with 70 and 70 was empty and after that 500 was connected with 1000 1000 and 100 was connected with nothing 100 was empty dead end also 200 was dead end 200 was dead end and one was 1000 1000 was also a dead end nothing was connected so this is our graph the same graph which i explained you here you can see here 100 is dead end 200 is also a dead end 1000 is also a dead end 70 is also a dead end so you can see here 70 100 200 and thousands are dead end and rest are connected one so we are calling the bfs and our start node is 10. now here now here we are going to use a q data structure so let us change the name to q q and while the q is not empty so while q till the length of q is greater than zero means still elements are present in q what we have to do we have to pop the very first element from the q so q 
q.pop and we have to pop the very first element which is at index 0 okay so when we are popping the element our very first task is to print that element so we have printed that one and after that we have to add all its connected nodes in the queue so for while in graph of current q dot q dot append all the q dot append all the value so you can see here the code is quite similar only the main logic is we have to use here q data structure in which we have to pop the very first element from the queue so let us execute and see so you can see here the output so you can see the output how it is working we have started from 10 so it's all its connected nodes 20 30 40 and 50 will be printed 20 30 40 and 50 will be printed and you can see here this was the very first node which we have traversed so for 20 it is 500 so 500 will be printed for 500 will be printed for 30 you can see what is the connected node 100 so 100 will be printed for 40 it's 200 so 200 will be printed for 50 it's 60 so 60 will be printed so all its connected nodes are printed now again it will traverse in the same direction in which we we have started and again this cycle goes in the same fashion so this is how bfs traversal works with the help of iteration so i hope you understood this explanation in a very simple way so if you learn something new please do like our videos and subscribe to our channel coding card and in the next tutorial, we will be learning about the recursive approach for this BFS traversal. Thanks for watching.